Good morning, my dear friends. We'll start production and properties of common metal, ferrous metals and alloys. The term metal in this text will be taken to mean any metallic material, whether pure or alloyed. So availability of ores. Base metal, approximately 70% of elements may be classed as metals. And of this, about 40 are commercial importance. Historically, copper, lead, tin, and iron are the metals antiquity. Metals of antiquity because they are either found free in the nature and their ores are relatively easy to reduce. Materials choice affected by process. The method of manufacturing frequently affects the alloy type chosen even after the base material has been selected. Although nearly all metals are cast at some time during their manufacture, those that are cast to approximate the finishing shape without deformation are specially referred to as casting alloys. When the metal is fabricated by deformation process, an alloy designed to have a good ductility is specified and referred to as wrought alloy. Some alloys can be either wrought or cast. More wrought alloys can be cast, but may casting alloys have insufficient ductility or even simple deformation processing. Ore reduction. Both iron and steel have their start in the blast furnace. Although other methods have reduction have been purposed and will likely to be developed, the tremendous investment in the equipment and trained personnel that would require for the replacement of present facilities almost ensure that the blast furnace method will remain for some time. So the blast furnace is producing Big iron, the product of the blast furnace. So steel production, fast as iron ore is reduced into pig iron, assisted by other materials, hematite, that is Fe2O3, magnetite, Fe3O4, plus coke. Coke is out when coal is burned in absence of air, then coke is produced, and the byproduct gas is produced. Limestone and air. Air means there not only air, it is that is really byproduct of again this blast furnace, carbon monoxide and air. The iron ore is reduced to pig iron assisted by other materials. Hematite, Fe2O3, magnetite, okay. Then there is charge, ore is 4000 and this in this limestone 800, coke 1800, air 80. 1000 so you have blast furnace gas 10800 so it is always returning here and to cocoban to burn the flames the carbon monoxide is very good for burning but there is two types of gases for the byproduct only carbon monoxide and furnace gas blast furnace gas so there are so many things are there but uh, the production is pig iron, slag, and dust. So this is the type of blast furnace. Producing pig iron greater than 3% carbon.
This contains 3% to 4% of carbon and smaller amounts of silicon, sulfur, phosphorus, manganese, and other elements. Pig iron required further processing. In the solid state, pig iron is weak. It is too hard to be machined and has practically no ductility to permit deformation work. It must therefore be treated to improve some of its properties by one of these methods. Early steel, the oldest known method making higher carbon steel consists of reheating wrought iron and powder charcoal together in the cementation process. The crucible steel, steel further reduction of the slag, greater uniformity of the carbon and closer control were later achieved by secondary operation known as the crucible process. Bars made by the cementite process were remelted in a clay or graphite crucible in which the slag floated in the surface. The crucible process produced steel of very high quality. However, the process is now considered obsolete. Similar quality steel can be manufactured using electric arc furnace. Open hearth furnace steel. Both the modern open hearth furnace and the base marrow converter are developed in 1850s. These two developments greatly increased the speed of with which pig iron could be refined. The modern era industry be tied to this development that led to production of large quantities of high quality low cost steel. So what happened? Iron ore to pig iron, high carbon, low ductility, low cost. Then they can save for the future, solidify, remelt, adjust, composition, ladle product cost. So if it is directly from the liquid state, it can go for white iron, gray iron, malleable iron, ductile iron. It can be cast to different products. But when it will go directly for carbon refinement, control and adjust composition, mesmer open heart, electric, oxygen process, majority of product is rot. So they are giving pores here, manganese, silica, all these things they are charging here with small miles limestone. Rot iron, they are getting ingot iron really here. Low carbon steel, medium carbon steel, high carbon steel, low alloy steel, high alloy steel. So, depending upon the alloy, they are charging alloy force, they are charging rather. Basemer steel, the basemer converter is shown figure 4.5, 4.3. The charge consists of molten pig iron. Steel scrap may be added to help control of temperature. After charging in the horizontal position, the air blast turn on through a tire and the conver converter turn upright so that the air bubbles through the melt, oxidizing and burning out first silicon, then carbon. This process can be used to reduce carbon content to about 0.05%. So let us see 4.3. This one. This is cross section of open heart furnace. This is Bessmer converter. <coughs> Electric furnace steel. Electric furnace steel is produced in a variation of the older crucible process with furnace heated by electric arc or induction. The atmospheric atmosphere can be well controlled in the electric furnace and careful control of composition can be maintained. Steel of the highest quality is produced by this method. Basic oxygen process. The basic oxygen process, a steel making process known as the basic oxygen process, was developed in Switzerland. Blah, blah, blah. The method was producing 1% of the world production. 
the growth of his 25% and by 60% by the world steel was made by the basic oxygen process. So in basic oxygen process, what is happening? So what is happening in basic oxygen still? Fundamentally, they all operate much as follows. Scrap as great as 30% of the heat is charged into the refining vessel. As shown schematically in figure. Four point four here. You can charge here. This is open at sorry. 4.4, sorry. This one. Cross-section of a basic oxygen furnace vessel during oxygen blowing. So they charge everything here. Then they blast oxygen lancing. That is oxygen lance. Scrap as great as 30% of the heat as charged into the refining vessel as shown in schematically figure 4. Molten pig iron is charged in the top of the scrap. The lance is positioned and high velocity jet of oxygen is blown up on the top molten mixture for about 20 minutes. During this period, the lime and various fluxes are added as aid to for control of the final composition. Really, then, some companies, they are taking this directly from blast furnace and putting inside this ladle. So some scrap is charged, okay. But from the liquid state also, the pig iron can be charged. The lens position and high velocity jet of oxygen is blown on the top of molten mixture for about 20 minutes. What happened then? Uh, lime and various fluxes are added. It aids for con that aids for the control of final composition. So carbon is coming out by carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. The metal is then sampled and if it meets the specification, poured through the lap hole into a ladle by tilting the vessel. Finally, the vessel is inverted to empty the slug and then is ready for reuse. With careful use, the vessel lining may last for as many as 400 heaps. Both open hearth and Besmer converters are likely to be supplied with oxygen to speed up speed combustion and refining. An open hearth furnace fitted with oxygen lenses can approximately double production with less than one half of the fuel of earlier method without use of pure oxygen. The making of Besmer still is speeded by use of oxygen combined with air and is also Im improved in composition mainly by reduction of nitrogen impurities left in the steel. Comparison of steel with cast iron. The casting of cast iron are cheaper cost wise. Those products can be made with suitable shapes, strength, cast castings. The cost of finished product often be lower in this form. However, all cast irons, uh, because of their high carbon content, are subjected to definite processing limitations of casting. They are used for compression purpose, not tensile purpose, thin sections, good finishes, dimensional control are obtained. 
at a reasonable cost only by deformation processing instead cast of casting def deformation can be performed only on materials having relatively high ductility wrought iron prior, prior to the introduction of currently used methods for making steel method of reducing carbon content of pig iron has been used since before 16 thousand the product although called wrought iron was actually the first low carbon steel to be manufactured in quantity wrought iron contains slag because of this material included slag which floated on the top as long as the metal was liquid the slag was mixed with the purified iron the resulting product was withdrawn from the furnace as a pastry ball on the end of the steering rod and while low carbon and silicon co obtained contained of 3% 4% slag mostly SiO2 these balls were then deform deformation process by repeated rolling cutting stackling uh, stacking and re-rolling on the same direction the resulting product consists of relatively pure iron with Many very fine slag stringers running on the direction of rolling. Nowadays, this is not uh, early stage that is there. Properties of wrought iron. Wrought iron has a tensile strength about 350 MPa, 50,000 PSI, 70,000 PSI. Why like this? And good ductility, although the material quite anisotropic, properties vary with orientation of direction of testing because the slag stringers is principally used up for the manufacture of welded pipe. Variety of metallic materials necessitates specification and codes. There is numbers, plain and low alloy steels. So acid basemer carbon steel, basic open heart steel, acid open heart steel, electric furnace alloy steel. They are the manufacturing furnaces for ingot, means for steel processing and then Plain carbon steels most used because of their low cost. Majority of steel used are plain carbon steels, low carbon steel steels, approximately 6 to 25 percent carbon. So, the point you have to remember 6 to 25 points of carbon that means 0 0.06 percent to 0 0.25 percent of are rated to low carbon steel and are rarely hardened by heat treatment because the low carbon content permits too little form. Formation of hard matensite, that is, the process is relatively ineffective. Medium carbon steel, the medium carbon steel zero contents 0.25% to 0.5%, that is 25 points to 50 points, contains sufficient carbon that may be heat treated for desirable strength, hardness, machinability, and other properties. High carbon steel, high carbon steel contains 50 to 160 points of carbon, 0.5% to 1.6% carbon. This group of steels is classed as tool and die steel, which is hardness is principal property desired because of the first reaction time and resulting low hardenability. Plain carbon steels nearly always must be water quenched. So treatment and associated danger of distortion of cracking, all things are there. So they can temper and all. hardened structure more than about 25.4 mm in thickness. Leave it. Alloy steel. Composition and structure affect properties. Alloy affect hardenability. 
interest in hardenability is indirect hardenability itself as i discussed earlier in the usually thought of most in connection with the depth hardening ability in a full hardening operation weldability the generally bad influence of alloys on weldability is a further reflection of the influence of hardenability So hardenability, strength, toughness, wear resistance, machinability, weldability, corrosion resistance. So as for that, they had given this table. Just go through it. Grain size and toughness. Nickel in particular has a very beneficial effect by retarding grain growth in that arsenic grain. As with hardenability, it is secondary effect of grain and refinement that are noted properties. Finer grain structure <coughs> may actually have less hardenability, but it has most pronounced effect on toughness. For two steels with equivalent hardness and strength, the one with finer grain will have better ductility, which result in improved toughness. This improved toughness, however, may be determined detrimental for machinability. Corrosion resistance. Most pure metals have relatively good corrosion resistance, which is generally lowered by impurities, a small amount of intentional alloys. In steel carbon in particular, lowers the corrosion resistance by very seriously. Chromium is extremely effective in percentage greater than 10%, which leads to a separate class of alloys called stainless steel. So improved properties at higher cost. The low alloy American Iron and Steel Institute. Low alloys are uh, steels are alloyed primarily for improved hardenability. They are more costly than plain carbon steels, and their use can generally be justified only when needed in heated, hardened, and tempered condition. Usually heat treated, the low alloy EISI steels are those containing less than approximately 8% total alloying elements. Although most commercially important steels contain less than 5%, the carbon content may vary from very low to very high. Stainless steels. They are frequently referred to as heat and corrosion resistant steels. So martensitic stainless steel with lower amounts of chromium or with silicon or aluminium added to some of the higher chromium steels, the material responds to heat treatment much as any low alloy steel. The gamma to alpha transformation in iron occurs normally and this steel may be hardened by heat treatment similar to that used in plain carbon or low alloy steels. Steels of this class are called martensitic, and the most used ones have 4% to 6% chromium. These are magnetic. Ferritic stainless steel. Here, martensite is the structure. Here, ferrite is the structure. That is the only difference. With larger amount of chromium, as great as 30% or more, the austenite is suppressed and the steel loses its ability to harden by normal steel heat treating procedure. Steel of this type are called ferritic and are particularly useful when high corrosion resistance is necessary in cold work products. Austenitic stainless steel with high chromium and the addition of 8% or more of nickel or combination of nickel and manganese, the ferrite is suppressed. This steels the most typical of which contains 18% chromium and 8% nickel are referred to as austenite stainless steel. They are not hardenable by normal steel heated heating procedure, but addition of small amount of other elements makes some of them harden, hardenable by solution precipitation reaction. Here the phase is austenite, gamma stage in the ductile stage at room temperature because of nickel. 
nickel and manganese are the austenite they are keeping me austenizing austenized state and chromium keeping going for button side composition and structure critical for corrosion resistance in any stainless steel serious loss of corrosion resistance can occur if large amount of chromium carbide form this chromium carbide is crc crc6 around 6 carbons combined with chromium one chromium so loss of when you lose corrosion chromium do you have corrosion resistance, you lose corrosion resistance. Consequently, the ferritic and austenitic grades are greatly made with low amount of carbon and even then may need special heat treatments or addition of stabilizing elements. So special heat treatment solution annealing or this stabilizing elements such as molybdenum, titanium. So this will react with uh, this low carbon and prevent chromium loss or formation of chromium carbide because they are greater affinity to carbon. With the martensitic grades in which the hardness and strength depend on carbon, the steel must be fully hardened with carbon in a martensitic, in a martensitic structure for maximum corrosion resistance. The austenitic steel process the best impact properties at low temperature, at higher strength and corrosion resistance at elevated temperature. These are called 300 series. And ferrite and austenite as 200 and 400 series. They're magnetic, ferritic and austenitic, uh, ferritic and martensitic and austenitic is non-magnetic. They are really paramagnetic, austenite steel are paramagnetic, very small affected by magnetic field. So we consider that non-magnetic. Both of the ferrite and martensite stainless steel are magnetic. Fabrication is difficult. The stainless steel are more difficult to machine and weld than most other ferrous metal. But form forming is okay. For, you can form it. Cast iron. Cast steel is isotropic, but low tensile and very high compressive strength. The so white cast iron is malleable cast iron, it treated white iron. Some tables of stainless steel and common cast irons, ductile ladle addition, gray, slow cooling, high CSI, chilled, fast surface chill, many things are there. We'll go through that, uh, but when you have time, aluminum alloys can be divided into two major categories, casting alloys and wrought alloys. So aluminum alloys, aluminum 99% minimum, aluminum alloys grouped by, you can add copper, manganese, silicon, magnesium, magnesium, silicon, zinc, tin, and lithium. Cast metal, you have copper, silicon, silicon, manganese, magnesium, zinc, tin, other elements. Basic temper designation. So, temper designations for aluminum steel, aluminum alloys, sorry for that, aluminum alloys. Are there F as fabricated O annealed H strain hardened rod product only W for solution heat treated T for thermally treated to produce stable temperature 
tempers other than FOH. F is for rot products. So it's no special control over thermal condition. Annealed applies to rot products that are annealed to obtain low strength temper. And cast products that are annealed to improve ductility and directional dimensional stability. Strain hardened rot products only applies to products that are strengthened by strain hardening with, without supplementary thermal treatments. Solution heat treated. Unstable on, temper application only to alloys that spontaneous, spontaneously is at room temperature after solution heat treatment. This designation is specific only when the period of natural aging is indicated. Half power, W half power. This applies to products that are thermally treated, T, and with or without supplementary strain hardened to produce stable tempers. Subdivision, subdivision of H temper strain hardened, H1 strain hardened only, H2 strain hardened and partially annealed, H3 strain hardened and stabilized, H4 strain hardened and lacquered or painted. Subdivision of T tempers, T1. Cooled at an elevated temperature and shaping process is naturally aged to a substantially stable condition. T2, the cooled from elevated temperature, shaping process, cold work, and naturally aged to a substantially stable condition. T3, solution heat treated, cold work, and naturally aged to substantially stable condition. T4 solution heat treated and naturally aged to substantially stable condition. T5 cooled from an elevated temperature shaping process, then artificially aged. T6 solution heat treated and then artificially aged. T7 solution heat treated and over aged stabilized. T8 solution heat treated cold work and then artificially aged. T9 solution heat treated artificially aged and then cold work. T10 cooled from the elevated temperature, shipping process, cold work, and then artificially aged. Rot aluminum alloys, strengthening of alloys with heat treatment. So alloy series. 1x to 8x, 6 and all. So the properties are given. You can see aluminum has a density of 2.7 gram per centimeter square, approximately one third of steel. So for structural purpose, it can be used. Uh, strength to weight ratio, you can see is good. Aluminium casting always alloys have the following characteristics. Good fluidity which helps filling thin section, low melting point, rapid heat transfer from molten aluminium to the mold. Hydrogen is the only gas with appreciated solubility in aluminium and its alloys that can be controlled by processing method. Many aluminium layers are relatively free from hot short cracking and tearing tendencies, chemical stability, Good as cast surface finish. Many casting alloys have good weldability. Then cups copper. Copper has excellent thermal and electrical properties. Corrosion resistance to some environments is good. So copper mainly used for electrical purposes, but its alloys
while the total tonnage of copper has not decreased the impurities of the metal relative ferrous metal and other non ferrous metal has decreased throughout recent history our copper is the metal that has been greater importance during the longest period of human history so you can copper alloys as they were found to occur naturally and fished it you can use bronze and brass nickel and its alloys considerable nickel used as an alloy in steel nickel and manganese are metals that have mechanical characteristics similar to those iron however neither is subjected to alloying with carbon and control of hardness by heat treatment nickel based alloys form a second group of high temperature material they normally contain chromium or cobalt as the principal alloying element and smaller amount of aluminum titanium molybdenum and iron properties at very good better properties at higher temperature then the stainless steel type but cost more cost is more corrosion resistance of nickel alloys most important property is corrosion resistance those richer in copper complete the compete with brass but have higher cost corrosion resistance and temperature temperature resistance those richer in nickel have superior heat and corrosion resistance at even higher cost and are used in many applications the composition monel is a monel metal is determined largely by composition of the ores found in the subsidiary subbury district of canada forget monel is the alloy of nickel cobalt alloys alloys of this type are useful structurally at temperature higher than 1000 degrees centigrade so if they have good corrosion resistance and tensile strength of greater as 13000 psi 90 mpa iron alloys non ferrous metals used for alloying with iron manganese and its alloys so all the beryllium is the lightest material available is extremely high cost restrict the use of very special application so manganese magnesium is the therefore the lightest metal commercially available with a density 2/3 of the aluminum but beryllium is lightest metal so that is you have to remember the magnesium alloys are good strength ranging up to 350 mpa so you can so strength to weight ratio is good but the problem with this this things alloy sub magnesium and aluminum or notch notch is the problem any small notch can destroy it notch toughness is less magnesium alloys work hard and easily stress levels high at notches and imperfections fine or thin magnesium can burn readily in air that is only magnesium so lot alloys titanium and titanium alloys titanium alloys are characterized by high strength moderate density 
half the density of steel and 70% higher than aluminum and excellent corrosion resistance. Titanium alloys have high strength ranging from 25,000 PSI for commercially pure titanium up to 200,000 PSI. For more complex rot alloys, that is the good property. That's why it is used for different, typically two or more metallic elements. Aluminium, vanadium, molybdenum, iron, zirconium, chromium, silicon, and tin are alloyed with titanium. Strength of titanium is comparable to that of steel and because of additional properties of relatively lightweight. Mainly used in aerospace. High-end bicycle and golf clubs, medical industry, surgical instruments, weight and assist product, wheelchairs, titanium alloys. 90% titanium, 6% aluminium, 4% balanium, and this known as TI6AL4B. Grades of titanium alloys with different values of different metals mixed with iron metal to achieve specific qualities. Their corrosion resistance, lightweight properties. Titanium alloys works work hard and easily. Stress levels high at notches and discontinuities. Special use metal heat and corrosion resistance alloys. Manufacturing cost high, stainless steels, special materials that have been developed for used in difficult process or something like high temperature steam piping boilers, rocket combustion chambers and nozzles, highly oxidizing corrosive and erosive condition. You can prepare <coughs> Special alloys. Other non ferrous metals antimony, beryllium, bismuth, cadmium, cerium, cobalt, columbium, germanium, gold. Hard and brittle, beryllium, lightest structural material, high strength, wet to ratio, brittle, transparent to x rays. Smooth, soft, brittle, high negative coefficient of resistivity, cadmium, highest temperature strength, and the lead based alloy, cerium, soft, malleable, ductile, cobalt, weak, brittle, high corrosion resistance, columbium, high melting point corrosion resistance, germanium, brittle corrosion resistance, semiconductor, gold, ductile, malleable, weak corrosion resistance. Indium soft low melting point, iridium most corrosion resistance metal lead, weak soft malleable corrosion, manganese moderate strength ductile mercury, liquid at room temperature, molybdenum high melting point, high strength elevated temperature, oxidize rapidly, palladium ductile corrosion resistance, rhodium high relatively free from 
oxide oxidation films chemically inert selenium special electrical and optical properties silver highest electrical conductivity corrosion resistance to non sulfur atmosphere silicon semiconductor special electrical and optical properties tantalum high melting point ductile, ductile corrosion resistance tin soft weak malleable corrosion resistance and the uses you can see tin for bronze so copper and tin is bronze titanium density between steel and light alloys high strength corrosion resistance tungsten highest melting point of metals strong high modulus of elasticity vanadium moderate strength ductile zirconium moderate strength ductile corrosion resistance used for stainless steel thank you gentlemen